Let's talk about mic selection. There are three common types of microphones, dynamic mics, condenser mics, and ribbon mics. Condenser mics generally pick up ultra high frequencies much easier than dynamic mics, but on average, can't take as much SPL as a dynamic microphone. Condensers need to be powered by a power supply, battery, or phantom power. Since they use a capacitor to convert the acoustical energy into electrical energy, the result is a stronger signal with a greater dynamic range. Dynamic mics handle loud signals more easily and have better noise cancellation properties. That's why you'll typically see dynamic mics on a drum kit. Ribbon mics tend to be darker sounding with a nice smooth bottom end. They get their name from the shape of the diaphragm. It's a thin metal ribbon between two magnets. The room you record your cab in can really make a difference with a ribbon mic because of its natural figure eight polar pattern. Let's hear the difference between some of these mics. For that example, I wanted you guys to hear the sound of the different mics with a drum set because that's a little bit more of how you're going to reference it. It's not often that you're going to hear a guitar part by itself, so it's not super important how it sounds, but it is sometimes important. So now I'm just going to quickly go through them so we can hear them back to back with the drums muted. <laughs> Each of these examples were adjusted by ear for the relative volume, and you can never make them sound like they're the same volume because some have way more bass, some have more mid-range, some have more high-end. I did try to compensate as much as I could, but you know, you can only do so much. Let's go through and try to just EQ them a little bit with minor EQs to sweeten them up and correct them just a little bit. Let's start with the Shure SM57. <laughs> Now this one is a classic microphone that I'm sure you've heard on many recordings, and I think it's mainly because it's such a balanced sounding microphone for a guitar. What I'm listening for right now is resonant frequencies. You can see if you use FabFilters Pro Q, the frequency response of the microphone and you can spot any peaks and valleys, any resonant frequencies, you can see where it's lacking. This does sound pretty balanced to me. Let me listen to it with just the drums again.
I'm hearing a high end frequency. Take that out a little. Let's hear that with the drums again. And that's gone for me. So let's adjust some of the really high end around where people talk about they hear fizz in the signal. Now that's not coming through that much anyway, but with some microphones, you will find that you'll need to adjust that because that'll be blaring through. This one's not so bad. Again, I think that's why the 57 has become such a, a staple for guitar tone. Now let's brighten this up without trying to add fizz. I like to use a 24 dB octave. Let's brighten that up. That sounds pretty good. Let's take out some of the muffled mid-range, the, the lower mid-range. That'll be around three to 400 hertz. Okay, let's bypass this and listen again. That's just a general EQ of that microphone. Let's go through the rest of the microphones and take out those resonant frequencies. This is most typically called notching or corrective EQ. The wider EQ moves that I was doing, I like to call sweetening because it's more of a, a general non-surgical EQ. All right, so we're on the Audix i5 now. So I'm getting something around 5,000. Just a few notches like this should do. If you do too many, you could fall down a tone hole and spend hours on this, and you just kill the guitar tone altogether. So just take out the ones that you can actually spot. Maybe you see them in here, maybe you didn't hear them. If you just see the difference and make sure that you're making a positive difference and not ruining the sound, then you're on the right track. I like what that's done to the sound. So we'll do the sweetening EQ just a little bit. I do want to mention around 1K is where you start to get most of your tone in the guitar. So while you're EQing, you need to think about the way that the bands are set up and how they affect the sound and what is the high-end fizz, where are the, scra the pick scrapes coming through, where are the actual notes and chords coming through. So let's just listen to just these bands and see what's actually coming through. So I'm just gonna solo the guitar here and we're gonna listen just to these bands. You can clearly hear notes, the musicality of the signal is coming through here. Let's raise it and see what we get. Still slightly musical. You can still hear notes, but they're kind of fading away. You're hearing more of the high end. After we get to a certain point here, we're at 3,000, 4,000. It's mainly just hissing and the sound of the pick hitting the strings. So anything that you're affecting up over there is going to be affecting just that. Let's keep listening, let's keep going higher.
you want to make sure that whenever you're EQing, you're bringing the notes out. If you have a guitar tone that you think is kind of dull and you want to brighten it up, if you're reaching for the really high stuff above 3,000, 4,000, you're just going to turn that fizz up. So if you keep it right below, you can turn the brightness of the notes up as well. Now, if we sweep this down a little bit lower, we're really hearing a lot of the notes in the guitar. That's where all, that's where all the tones are actually coming through. The more of that you have, the less fizz you also have. So this type of EQing is called musical EQing. Because you're actually affecting the music part of it, you're not affecting the noisy part of it. So if you need to bring that tone out, you can either bring up the mid-range, lower mid-range, upper mid-range, or you can bring down the super high-end fizz. What I like to do is bring up the brightness around two kilohertz because you get the best of both worlds. You get the musicality and you also get a little bit of the brightness from the, the pick scraping the strings with each strum. Let's move on to the SM7B. Really hearing a strong one. I can see it spiking up here as well. Let's make sure that's the one I was hearing. Yeah, it's like a cricket. Now that frequency, let's listen to just this mic with the drums. That frequency is going to cut right through and kind of hide the musicality of your guitar. And you, that's why you need to take care of these because it will mask the good part of the guitar tone. So I'll play it with the mix and turn it on and off so you can hear the difference. So since that resonant frequency is actually a note, it is adding a note to your guitar chords that you don't really want. So you want to make sure that you take those out. But like I said, don't take out too many or you'll lose the actual characteristic of that mic, what makes that mic good. Let's check out the 421. Let's compare it to the other ones here. That 421 definitely has a lot more high end, around 10 kilohertz. That kind of just, those noisy frequencies. Not bad. I see that there's some sort of notch here. And then you'd want to do a little bit of sweetening. Whenever I have it turned off, the guitar kind of sounds nasally, but whenever I have the EQ on, it makes it sound a lot bigger. 
Let's check out the SM81, which is actually a pencil condenser microphone. Condenser microphones usually have a wider, flatter frequency response, so let's see how these compare to all those dynamic mics we just listened to. Pretty good. We definitely have a lot around 10K. Again, we'll bring that down. That's because that's a condenser mic. A lot of woofiness in this one, around 300 hertz. Let's brighten this up a little bit. Overall, this microphone is pretty flat. It doesn't really have much of a resonant frequency anywhere like a lot of the dynamic mics. Have. Let's hear it with the drums. Take a little bit out of the, the palm muting. I'm pretty pleased with that one. So let's go on to the KM184 and check that out. Another pencil condenser mic made by Neumann. Turn the drums off. It's got a little bit of a nasally sound, kind of like the last microphone. Let's move along to the AKG C414 BULS. This one's a lot darker. Something to keep in mind about condenser microphones is that if you set it on a different polar pattern, you can actually get a completely different frequency response out of the microphone. If you're on something like hypercardioid or figure eight or omnidirectional, omnidirectional being probably the brightest setting that you'll have it on. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you might get more of the room. So this one might be a good microphone to blend with another mic that was already bright. Let's move on to the next microphone, Neumann U87. So this one is a lot more mid-rangey and darker than the other microphones, which works well for vocals because you want that warm sound on vocals. You don't want it to sound brittle and harsh. But for this application, this may not be a choice microphone. I'm sure there's a way that this microphone could work, and I'm sure people have used this microphone in the past. But right away, for me, this is not beating out the SM57 or the SM81 or the 184. To me, this one, I would just move on to the next microphone. Let's go ahead and listen to the Royer 121. You can see and hear right away, this microphone's frequency response lends itself to really bassy material. It's really capturing that low end very well. So this may work well in conjunction with a brighter microphone like the Sennheiser 421. And you can really benefit from using this microphone by throwing it on a part. Maybe that's not a low tuned palm muted riff Maybe instead you can use it on high octaves or a high lead to just smooth it out so it doesn't sound really bright and brittle and cut through the mix too much in a way that you don't want. But for a microphone by itself, for this riff, I would not choose it. Let's move on to the next. This is another ribbon mic, but it's a little brighter. It's a Bayer Dynamic M160. <laughs> Now 
Now that one sounds pretty good. That's definitely up there with the other microphones. <laughs> Sounds pretty even. I'm going to turn the EQ off of the SM57 and compare it to that. Definitely brighter. Good low end there as well. Maybe too much. So we have those darker ribbon mics that would definitely be great for leads of any kind, especially the higher ones. And then we have the SM57 is absolutely one of my favorites, and it could probably work on any type of material. And there's also ways to make it work even better by changing the axis and other things that we'll get into a little bit later. I would also choose the Shure SM81 or the Neumann KM184. These microphones will definitely be the contenders for whenever we start to dial in our different tones for our specific genres.